All right, we're going to talk about Ben Shapiro talking about Joe Rogan confronting CNN's medical expert on COVID. This is what the media and the Democrats have done, and Dr. Fauci and our public health establishment. They've created a pathological fear of a virus that should not be feared at this point by pretty much anybody other than people who are uniquely compromised, immunocompromised, or very, very elderly. It's over, okay? If the vaccines are available and you choose to get a vaccine, you shouldn't be worried. If you choose not to get a vaccine, you're probably not getting vaccinated because you're not particularly worried. Okay, the, the, the pathology is visible nearly everywhere. So Mark Cuban, he says that he's gonna force his employees to be vaccinated. If you work for me, I require my, my employees to be vaccinated. Like you, I don't want my kids to be at risk. So, you know, the consequences of you not being vaccinated is I'm not gonna shut the fuck up. I'm gonna be in your mother near driving you mother crazy. What a hero. What here? Okay, there's only one problem. Your kids are not at risk, Mark. Okay, let's, uh, I, I know I repeat myself a lot whenever we talk about COVID and shit, but like, I do find this additionally hilarious, I guess, uh, because, you know, number one cause of death for the past two months for people between the ages of 34 and 55. Ben Shapiro talking about how the media is uh, greatly exaggerating and, and making COVID seem like a thing to be feared is a absolutely preposterous proposition. It should be something that people should fear. So Joe had on Sanjay Gupta from CNN, right? their medical expert over at CNN. And it just went so poorly for Gupta because if you are the public health expert over the last year, you look like a fool. You've done a terrible job, generally speaking. Gupta was asked by Rogan about children vaccine. And Rogan says something very simple. And right? what you're about to hear is a very simple logical point from Rogan that Gupta completely misses. Okay, Rogan says to him, so here's the deal, Sanjay, you're vaccinated, right? And Gupta's like, yeah, he's like, oh, the brilliant point that he's making, which is that you're vaccinated. So, uh, like, what if you feel like you're actually more safe because you're vaccinated? And then because of that, you're just like putting yourself at risk. Brilliant, dude. That's not a brilliant point, you fucking dingus, because you're addressing a point that does not exist. The people who are unvaccinated are fucking dying. And Ben Shapiro knows this and he has to admit this, but he refuses to because, you know, he, it's not great for his audience. The people who are unvaccinated aren't literally fucking uh, living in fear and staying at home. They're just unvaccinated and doing the exact same shit that they're doing. A recent study showed that the vaccine would have prevented 90,000 deaths in a four month period. Yeah, study made by Communism University. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, bias studies. There's so few children that have died from COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, th th there are. It's like, I think, 500 or so children. Out of have died millions from... and millions and millions of kids. That probably have been exposed. Yeah. And, and again, part of it is is not defining this in terms of life and death. OK, but by the way, Rogan didn't stop there. He also went after Gupta because he's on CNN. And he was like, um, so I took ivermectin and people kept saying on CNN that it was horse dewormer. And uh, you guys are liars. Here is here's Rogan just shellacking Gupta over it. It's a lie on a news network. It, and it's it, a lie that's a willing that's that's a lie that they're conscious of. It's not a mistake. Yeah. They're unfavorably framing it as veterinary medicine. The, the thing is, we're, we're, we're like going so fast. Like, I feel like I'm missing. I'm missing. Do you think I that want that's to... a problem that your news network was not... lies? I love that Joe Rogan is like hyper focusing on the dude. Your news network is lying. When like the entire criticism directed at Joe Rogan right now is that at this point, like he's fucking lying about COVID. You know what I mean? Like he knows better. He has to know better. So many motherfuckers have talked about it. To him, at him, about him, like he's had friends who are doctors, like Ronna Patrick, come on. And he just refuses to fucking listen. He refuses to listen, exclusively fucking listens to people who agree with him already. Unless you have people who are out there actively battling these pathologies, these mental pathologies that people now have about this, the only way the economy comes back is if Joe Biden says to people, you are now safe, go live your life. Bro, but like people literally aren't. I don't know how you can be like even lightly anti-mask or not anti-mask or anti-vax or like allow anti-vaxxer rhetoric to continue and defend while simultaneously being like, oh yeah, we should go back and live in our, in our lives. It's like, dude, that's what we want, dumbass. Like that's what everybody wants. And I know Ben is vaccinated. He routinely says like the vaccines work, but then he follows that up with like, if you don't want to take it, you shouldn't. Well, okay, but we can't go back to regular lives. If motherfuckers are like, I'm not taking the vaccine. If literally every single person was vaccinated, COVID would no longer be a problem. It would no longer be as fucking deadly. There could be additional strains that come out. We literally should have everyone vaccinated regardless so that like if there's a new strain and we can combat it, but it is less likelihood of mutations, at least in America, less likely of mutations when there's less 
uh, unvaccinated people. Absolutely horrendous. My guy will not be gone. No, you fucking idiot. I'm not saying COVID will be eradicated if everyone is vaccinated. But you know what will happen? It will no longer be as deadly. What the fuck do you not understand? 99% of motherfuckers that are dying in the hospital right now are unvaccinated, dude. So Joe Biden apparently is now going to become embroiled in the Hunter Biden email scandal. Remember that time that that was not a story, the Hunter Biden email scandal? What the fuck is he talking about, dude? Okay, I'm done. I can't watch the rest of this. This is so fucking stupid. Joe Rogan apparently is reflecting on the Weinstein Sam Harris drama. Sam Harris is like making a uh, making a return back to like you know being a liberal, and he's being a liberal on the COVID stuff. No, he's he's woke again. I mean, he's still probably an Islamophobe piece of shit, but he's like actively trying to debate Brett Weinstein on uh, the issue of COVID because Weinstein is like, you know, Dr. Horsepaste over here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he's just like a, a fucking regular advocate of ivermectin. And I don't think I could even get them together in a room like it sam doesn't want to have brett on his podcast and so i'm like okay could i have the two of them on mine like but his, I mean, there's his position is that yeah. B brett is uh w wildly incorrect about the efficacy of the vaccines the dangers of the vaccines and um the effectiveness of them and also that he's incorrect about uh how vaccines will select for more aggressive variants when the vaccines allow transmission right so being a leaky vaccine this is the controversy as one of the controversies that i got involved with too because i tweeted a paper from 2015 that was specifically about how leaky vaccines meaning vaccines that also allow transmission can select for more aggressive variants. Sam's position was that these, first of all, this variant came from India what? where there's way less wait, people. Wait, 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 wait. So Brett Weinstein's so, so, position is just completely false and Sam's position is just like in line with the, the scientific community. Got it. So, so if there's one protein like in this vaccine that protects you from COVID, but then there are other variants that are not protected in that. Yeah, those variants literally mutated in unvaccinated people. This is literally just completely incorrect. The original COVID variant that was all around had really good immunization uh, and really good response from the vaccine, okay? The likelihood that you were going to get COVID when you were vaccinated with the original variant was relatively low. You could still get it. There could still be breakthrough cases, but it was relatively low. And then amongst the unvaccinated population in india okay where there was a gigantic unvaccinated population in india a new variant mutated called the delta variant that was stronger that didn't happen because of vaccines dude but i don't think brett's position is that it's creating these variants but it's that having people vaccinated for that variant selects for more aggressive variants i'm too dumb to understand who's right dude dude he's first of all then why take a fucking strong stance on one side against the other, like regularly. Dude, it, it goes to show that like, he is literally a fucking ape. He just is a straight up fucking ape. It's obvious, he's such a fucking dumb ape that he like doesn't do his own research and only relies on people who he considers to be like brilliant. If you were early on in like influencing Joe Rogan, then that's it, like he will trust you. That's why he's like, oh, I just don't know which side is correct and which side is incorrect. The only reason why he's saying that is because like a person he trusts, Sam fucking Harris, has this point of view. So he's just like, yeah, I just like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because you say like, he's like, he considers a flat earth theory. Well, why would you not want to debate somebody that has a flat earth theory? It well, should be pretty easy for you. Maybe it's, all it's not. You're a dumbass. Whoever this fucking person is, he's a dumbass. It's not easy to debate people who have learned a completely false set of data and have created like a fucking, uh, a complete different universe they live in because you have to enter that universe, know all that information, be as knowledgeable as they are about the fucking flat earth information and also be able to recognize what the talking points are to be able to effectively counter them and dismantle them. Like debating an insane person is not an easy thing. I hate to be, I hate to use this cliche, but it's like, it's like this. Uh, the, the cliche is what? Like you can't, you can't argue with stupid because they'll drag you down to their level and they have a lot more experience there. It's just the truth. Having a debate about people like flat earthers and whatnot requires you to know so much about fucking flat earth. They're going to keep pulling like weird ass uh, shit out of their ass that you might not know how to fucking address. You're like, what the fuck? Now, having said that, though, 
Sam Harris should learn all the fucking anti-vaxxer talking points because like, come on, it's easy. It's way more damaging than flat earth. Uh, it's, it's way more important than flat earth. Uh, and, and, you know, everyone is aware of what the fucking talking points are. So just like figure it out. Let's hear it. Joe Rogan waxes lyrical about how but, nuanced Tucker you know, Carlson book, is. Bitch. This is the, this is the anti-weed guy who like once wrote like eight articles for the New York times and has been running off of the fucking, that's him, right? The anti-weed guy who's also, like, a, a COVID conspiracist? Like, you guys are, like, completely different, but you're, like, the same in, in the most important way, which is, like, you don't buy into bullshit. Yeah, you guys are so similar, dude. You know, you just, like, don't buy the official narrative. It's like, dude, I love when motherfuckers are like, yo, I'm so skeptical. I'm so skeptical of official narratives. Tucker Carlson is doing the official narrative. He's just doing the other side of the official narrative. To anybody, Tucker anybody. has a lot of left wing people on. Yeah, a lot of left wing people on, dude. He's always having left wing people on, dude. Totally. You know, he had Brett Weinstein on, who's uh, very progressive. He has Tulsi Gabbard on. Tulsi did a quick trip to Africa for the CIA Gabbard, dude. Yeah, I love how left wing Tulsi Gabbard is. The people that he's saying are left wing are fucking Tulsi Gabbard and Brett Weinstein, dude. His discussions that he has on his show are some of the most nuanced in that he is willing to have conversations with anybody from all these different whatever people that have been, you know, in issues with college censorship where, you know, so-called progressive college students have censored professors from discussing certain topics or. Bro, this man is perpetual perpetually living in fucking 2014 joe rogan will never move beyond 2014 society has moved beyond 2014 joe rogan is still there college students are censoring professors like what the fuck what is this take bro we have to figure out what's right and what's wrong and you don't get that by just buying into the official narrative you guys are both suspicious of the official narrative i love that like being suspicious of the official narrative is just saying stuff like you know immigrants are dirty coming here to ruin this country they all operate on this like secret notion that they want to fucking ruin like American uh, white supremacy or some shit like that's the I love I love that that is like going against the grain really subversive and new ideas like uh, just racism repackaged in a more populist capacity. How can you be the most popular network political commentator? And motherfuckers are still like, dude, he's so fucking subversive, dude. He's going against the grain. It's like, no, he is the grain, dumbass. He's not like an independent commentator. He's not like on fucking Twitch. He is the mainstream. That energy has never changed. It's the same mentality as like, Dan Crenshaw is more of a working class guy because he wears snakeskin cowboy boots and a fucking big belt buckle, even though his like father was a fucking massive oil engineer that, uh, you know, traveled internationally to all these areas that the CIA also had a unique interest in uh, with oil uh, reserves. Um, weird. Uh, anyway, but like AOC is not working class because she's fucking brown, even though she was literally a bartender. It's always just the aesthetics. And that's the same as Tucker Carlson. Like Tucker Carlson speaks for the working class, even though he's a fucking lacrosse dude who used to wear a fucking bow tie nonstop. And he's the recipient of the uh, Swanson frozen food dynasty. But he speaks for the fucking working class. Why? Because he's just racist. That's it. And but he says it in like a in a way where like it's not overtly you, you need to at least understand some of the concepts, some of the values that he's espousing to recognize how racist it is.